At a Chicago City firehouse in 1971, a young boy and his even younger brother are trying on a fireman's coat. The older boy, Stephen McCaffrey, lectures his brother, Brian, on how to be a proper fireman. Both brothers are passionate and join their father on one of his fire calls. When they arrive on site, the call is for an apartment building. Brian watches as his father quickly makes his way up to the top floor where the blaze is. He and his partner, John Axe Adcox, rescue a kid about Brian's age and give him to their cohorts waiting on a nearby ladder. McCaffrey and Axe, continuing battling the fire when a gas line ruptures and the entire floor explodes, killing McCaffrey. Brian watches his father's helmet land in front of him on the street. Axe, pushed away from the explosion by McCaffrey, rushes out and hugs Brian, then appears to bark orders to the rest of the company. Brian is stunned and picks up his father's helmet just as a photographer snaps a picture of him. The picture later becomes a prize-winning cover of Life magazine. Twenty years later, Brian is at a party. He has just graduated from a firefighter's training academy. He and his friend, Tim, are also waiting for their station assignments. Tim is given Engine 17, the toughest company in the city. Brian's own assignment is elsewhere because he bribed the city fire chief. Brian doesn't want to work for 17 because his older brother Stephen runs the house and the two have become estranged. At the party, Brian also meets up with his old girlfriend, Jennifer, who isn't very happy to see him. Brian has hardly made any effort to keep in touch with her or his family for several years. Moments before, after parking his Porsche in front of his house, a man named Seagrave is entering his house when he's consumed by a huge explosion that propels him back through the windshield of his own car. When Brian and Tim make it to the site, the fire is already out and Brian's brother and Axe are there, bragging about the completed job. Brian sees Seagrave, horribly burned and dead. Stephen tells Brian that he's talked to the fire chief that Brian belongs at Company 17. Brian is flustered. Meanwhile, Shadow Ringale, an arson inspector, arrives on site. Brian visits his sister-in-law, Helen, and his nephew. He also notices that Stephen isn't home. Helen tells him they've been separated. Because he didn't keep in touch with anyone back home, Brian didn't know. He next goes to his father's fishing boat near the river, where Stephen has been living since the separation. Stephen is suspicious of Brian's return to firefighting, much like his failure at several other career fields of the previous few years. Brian gets up early for work. However, his car won't start and he must run to Seventeen's house. He jumps aboard Stephen's engine and dresses inside, catching up with Axe, who had looked after the McCaffrey brothers after their father died. The company reaches the site, a dressmaker's factory. At one point, the floor collapses. The team receives a call saying there are no other companies to help them out. Brian thinks he heard somebody yelling for help, but only sees a mannequin. At a party being thrown for the Chicago fire chief, Stephen spots his wife with another man. A Chicago alderman, Swayzak, offers Brian a chance to work with Ringel. Brian turns him down and finds out that his old girlfriend, Jennifer, works in the alderman's office. Stephen grows increasingly jealous of his wife and starts a fight with the man. Brian tries to help, and they're both ejected from the party. Later, Brian and Stephen respond to a fire raging in a slum tenement where they're told they'll find a trapped kid. The two rush into the building without waiting for backup. When they find the apartment where the child is trapped, Stephen breaks the door down and rushes in. Backup arrives and Stephen saves the young boy. Later, the two talk on the street and argue about Stephen's seemingly uncontrollable need to emulate their father. Brian decides to leave Company 17, takes Swayzak's offer, and goes to work for Ringel. Ringel takes Brian out with him immediately to the parole hearing of a pyromaniac, Ronald. When Brian first meets Ronald, the man is excited, recognizing Brian from the cover photo of him from Life magazine. He also shares the story of Ringel's nickname, Shadow. Ringale had been burned badly in a fire started by Ronald years before, and the blast from a small tub of phosphorus had thrown Ringale's shadow on the wall. At the parole hearing, Ronald says that his incarceration has reformed him and he's ready to rejoin society. Ringale isn't convinced. 
Ronald admits he'd like to burn the entire world, and his parole is denied. At a city theater, the proprietor, Donald Cosgrove, is killed by an escaping blast of heat. Company 17 responds, but most of the blast, a backdraft, has burned out. Brian and Ringale arrive to investigate the scene. Brian's former colleagues from 17 are resentful that he's taken a desk job. Ringale searches the proprietor's office and finds a clue behind an electrical socket in the wall. Brian and Ringale are told that the accelerant was a chemical called trictoclorid, traces of which were found on Cosgrove's corpse. Brian reunites with Jennifer and shows her around Ringale's firehouse. The two climb onto the back of an engine and have six, just as the company is called to a high-rise fire. Company 17 is also there. Stephen takes the opportunity to train Tim on breaking doors down with their axes. Tim forgets to check one of the doors for heat and is blown back by a blast of fire when he breaks it open and it sets him on fire. By the time the rest of the company comes in with hoses, Tim is horrifically burned. At the hospital, Brian and Stephen get into a fight when Brian suggests his brother's need for heroics caused Tim's injuries. Brian asks Jennifer to do some snooping in Swayzak's office for any evidence that could link the deaths of Seagrave and Cosgrove. Ringale is convinced they were all victims of the same arsonist. Jennifer finds evidence that they were friends of Swayzak and were involved in a complicated fraud scam that forced the closure of firehouses throughout the city. The firehouses would later be turned into parks or community centers, costing firefighters their jobs and resources. Ringale and Brian go to Swayzak's home. When they smell escaping natural gas, they search the house. Brian finds Swayzak unconscious and is attacked by the arsonist, who wears a ski cap. Brian wrestles with him and shoves him against a shorting electrical plug. Ringale finds them and throws the man off Brian. The arsonist runs off. Brian and Ringale pull Swayzak from the burning house just as it explodes. Ringale lands on a wrought iron railing and is impaled through his shoulder. Brian is now in charge. Brian visits Ronald in prison to try and understand the psychology of the arsonist. Ronald suggests to Brian that the arsonist is likely a firefighter who has access to Trick Talk Lorit. Brian suspects his brother and goes to his father's boat, finding cans of a solvent containing the chemical. Brian goes to Seventeen's house and searches Stephen's locker, finding nothing. As he closes it up, he sees Adcox shirtless in the locker room. He notices a strange burn on Adcock's back, shaped like an electrical socket. Brian realizes it was Axe that he fought in Swayzak's house, and he is the arsonist. Outside, in an alley, Stephen asks Brian if the arsonist is Adcox, not noticing Axe listening at the window above them. The company is called to a fire at a chemical factory, and Brian joins them. A few blocks from the site, the truck Brian is riding in flips over in a minor auto accident and Brian must run to the factory. He finds Stephen and Axe arguing on the roof. Axe explains that he was fed up with politicians closing down fire stations, reducing the number of firefighters in the city, and placing the lives of the remaining fighters in danger due to downsizing. Axe's plan was to kill all the politicians responsible. While the three continue to debate Axe's actions, the roof of the building begins to collapse. All three run to the edges of the roof and Brian makes it to a fire escape. A blast of fire causes him to fall into a large elevator shaft that fills with water. A broken gas pipe throws fire in his direction, but he is saved by Stephen. As they walk out of the building, they are attacked by Axe. Axe and Stephen seem ready to fight each other with their axes, but Adcox breaks down. A blast from a few chemical barrels below them wrecks the catwalk they're standing on, and they end up hanging from the twisted metal, with Stephen holding on to Axe several stories above the inferno below. With Stephen's hand slipping, Axe tells Stephen to let him fall. Stephen refuses and his hand slips. Axe is killed and Stephen falls onto a pipe railing, causing serious injury to his abdomen. Two of Seventeen's other men rush into the room, but lose their hose in another blast. Brian makes it down to the floor of the massive room and takes control of the hose, allowing the two men to reach Stephen. Stephen is proud that his brother has overcome his fear of fire and is bravely fighting the blaze. 
Stephen is rushed to the hospital, with Brian at his side. On the way, Stephen's condition worsens, and he falls unconscious and dies. Before he dies, he implores Brian not to reveal that Axe was the arsonist so it won't taint the department. Stephen and Axe are buried with honors. Brian and Ringale interrupt a press conference being held by Swayzak and present the evidence they've collected, stating that Swayzak engineered the downsizing of the Chicago Fire Department along with Cosgrove, Seagrave, and others. Brian apologizes to Jennifer for bringing down her boss. Brian rejoins Seventeen and keeps the shield from his brother's helmet. A call comes up and Brian joins the company on the run. On the way, he helps a new candidate buckle his fire coat properly, much like his brother had done for him. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.